Hello, everyone. Redcoat here. Uh, I've got Cient here with me. Hello, I'm Cient here, and some of you may recall from some of the earlier podcasts that I introduced myself as the technical director for Vernacular Games. It's going to be relevant today. And I've also got Dusty. Hey, I was the original uh, graphics programmer on Highway to the Moon, and then later I've been a funder and kind of producer for Vernacular Games. Yeah, as you may well know, I'm Redcoat, the uh, lead designer and producer, uh, in particular on uh, the game Highway to the Moon, but also in general, uh, I do produce production work for Vernacular Games. So, the main reason for the reintroductions is we're going to be going into the long haul for this particular subject matter, the subject of Highway to the Moon, Vernacular Games' first title, um, and everything that went into the development of that over the course of five casts. So today's cast is an introduction to what Highway to the Moon is and um, some of the things that went into coming up with it and uh, the history of vernacular games moving up to the development of that product. Now, before you all panic and think five casts, that's going to be like five months before they're done with this. We're also going to be with this uh, series on Highway to the Moon rolling out a new podcast format where we're going to do a weekly podcast and see how that fits into things. One of the things that we've noticed is that we have a very hard time keeping our discussions kind of short because we have a lot to say about our topics. So we want to see what happens when we break them up in terms of what you're listening to. So it's not going to take five months. You believe me, we've got a lot to talk about for Higher the Moon. I know that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, strap yourselves in, I guess. <laughs> The first question that comes up with, you know, what, what even is Highway to the Moon? The name might imply that it, it is, in fact, about a highway to the moon, but specifically it's about a dude on a motorcycle going to the moon. Via a highway. You know, like most of the old top-down shmups from arcade cabinets and so forth. The actual design doesn't really make that much sense when you think about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, we've had things with magical girls flying towards shrines, trying to stop time from eating itself, and oh, there's all sorts of things coming out of the Toho series there, and then you've got like all sorts of world-ending phenomena that you have to stop with shooting bullets and being a tiny bullet dodger. So, as you probably surmised, Highway to the Moon is a scrolling shmup. So, what is a scrolling shmup? Uh, so, a scrolling shmup, shmup is short for shoot 'em up. It's not actually an acronym, it's just we scrunched all the words together. And, uh... A compression... Yeah. I, I'm trying to figure out how to turn compression and acronym into a phrase, but it's not coming out. A compressionim. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that's vernacular. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe only here. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so it's a compression M for shoot 'em up. And the idea is that, uh, as the name implies, it's something where you're moving on the screen and you're shooting everything that appears. Um, your main interaction is destroy stuff, blow it up. But this is uh, a scrolling shoot 'em up, and specifically, this is a top down one. So we're basically, if you take a shoebox and you look down inside of it, um, you could actually see the, the screen. Uh, in there. Uh, that's a little Just bit of a... imagine a conveyor belt inside a shoebox, and you have the right idea. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. So yeah, that's the basic concept of the game. One of the things that makes it a bit different from others, because the, the top-down shmup is a common genre. You see it in a lot of arcades, and there's actually a lot of PC games in this genre as well. 1942... Yeah. Uh, uh, 19, 1942, 1945, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Strikers, 1945. Um, we got Ikaruga, we got Raiden. You've got the uh, Bullet Hell type games. They're uh, more about not being hit at all in the forms of Toho and other games. Yeah, so one of the things that separates our game from the others is that it, um, well, it features a health bar, which is a little bit rarer in, in this series type. Yeah, you're allowed to take a hit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, a couple hits, actually. Yeah, a in lot fact, of hits. You're, in fact, you're quite expected to be hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you're allowed to take a hit in this game. The other thing is that this game uh, features a road. As the title implies, Highway to the Moon, you're actually on the highway. And so this creates kind of a platforming aspect. Yeah, kind of a diabolical highway that wants to throw you off of it. But yeah, highway nonetheless. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's not fun if, if the highway is not trying to kill you. <laughs> I mean, it does have to keep up with all sorts of gravitational forces with the spinning of the Earth and going to the moon and all these things. So you kind of expect it to not be in the best shape. Yeah. And it's not. And so you have to keep track of the road and your character and the bullets that are coming at you. 
Um, so this actually brings us to one of the other mechanics of the game, which is phase. Uh, we'll get into the specifics of that in one of the later topics, but the main point is that phase is a defensive mechanic in the game. It's something that allows you to dodge bullets, and it also allows you to quote-unquote defend yourself against falling off the road. That's right, all you gravity haters out there. We have a mechanic that lets you combat gravity. <laughs> But yeah, that's the, that's kind of the basics of the game. So the the initial vision of the game was, of course, well, <laughs> in so much it was kind of hodgepodge. I, I remember the day when we came up with it. So we I were don't... because Highway to the Moon first off was was our first product that we finished. Um, that's not to say that it was the first product that we actually did stuff on, though. <laughs> yeah, that would be a fighter that we decided, yeah, we don't have artists, it probably isn't going to happen right now. Come back to it later. Yeah, we still have it in the archives, all of that data. Yeah, that later hasn't come yet. Yeah, no. <laughs> Turns out later is very later. So on this particular product, we were trying to figure out what we wanted to do, and we went through so many different ideas, because it was like, first we were like, oh, well, we can't do the fighter, so we need to make something simple and quick uh, that's easy to develop. And uh, I wrote those words later on, because easy to develop and building an engine from scratch don't actually mix. Especially not in C++. Uh, <laughs> and especially not from scratch in C++. <laughs> I mean, from scratch in anything is going to be difficult. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we, we did that, and it was like we went through a couple ideas. I mean, at some point, we were thinking about having a corn on the cob that shot popcorn at other things. And eventually, it was like, you know what? Let's make a game about a dude on a motorcycle, because I like motorcycles and space and things. So did you rue that decision? I did not rue that decision. I still love that decision. I might rue the implications of that decision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we took a lot longer than we need to, <laughs> <laughs> or should have, I should say. But yeah, we'll get into the we'll get into the specifics of what uh, <laughs> what those implications were, on the later casts. But yeah, so that was kind of where we came up with that idea, and the whole point of making Highway to the Moon was, in part, it was let's make a game and let's see if we can actually make a game. That was the first thing. It was a testing ground for this team of vernacular and all of the people we had involved. And it was also kind of a team building experiment, you know, just getting everyone together and seeing, can we do this? Not that I was part of the team or involved, or even that the team was called Vernacular back when it first started. Oh yeah, no, no. When when we first started, it was like... It went through a couple name iterations. <laughs> yeah, I think... And none we, of them were official. <laughs> yeah, it was like I, Triple E Productions, yeah, Omnis which, Productions. Triple E always re made me think of that uh, European city. Yeah. Well, I mean, the actual meaning of the name was not that great either, because it was just kind of like triple E as opposed to triple A, which means you're like four steps down from triple A. <laughs> How ambitious. Not very well thought well, through. Well, <laughs> and, and the other problem with it is we already have three E's in video game development. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we have put those names down the toilet, but I remember when it first actually formed, well, it wasn't vernacular at the time, but when it first even got started on developing the products, it was just like, I was coming home from a long day of testing, and I decided to stop by um, Dragon Coder's house, and it just kind of busted down the door. He was playing Dark Souls at the time. I think Dusty was there. I'm not sure. You might have been. Yeah, yeah, I was there, yeah. I busted down the door. I was like, I want to make a game. And then Dragon Coder kind of turns. It's like, can I help? It's like, sure. And that's how it started, folks. Just, just that simple. <laughs> uh, and then life got in the way. You know, you know how. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a little bit of a primer on the this kind of the situation that led to the building of Highway to the Moon. Um, and I. Uh, like, Dusty uh, Santer, do you have anything to add? It's interesting to think back to that sort of beginning point, because it was uh, Skitter in Pokemon Club. that was like, hey, we need help. Are you free? And I'm like, yes. And uh, so I remember it was January of 2012 when mm -hmm. I first started working with you guys. Yeah. And uh, came in, well, kind of like a, we're, we're going to go with a tornado. Uh, tornado. Oh, yeah, he, yeah. He he, he's, he's the best coder out of all of us, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Tornado's good. I remember you first phrased it as, you came in like a wrecking ball. <laughs> but anyway, I like singing. Uh, singing is fun. Yes, yes. He came in and Whirlwind Sientir came down and was like, what is this code? 
What is this? Tweak bar? What is this? I will destroy this. Yeah, we never, we, yeah, yeah. That was a bad idea. That was a terrible idea. It, it was an idea. And, <laughs> and to be fair, it's what you had to work with at the time. So some kind of backstory of where things were at when I first came there, because I think it'll help give some of an idea. Um, it's going to be written in a custom engine. There are two big reasons for this. The first one was DigiPen told us to make custom engines. Um, I think that kind of set some of the initial mind space. But the other thing you have to remember is this is back, I started in 2012, they would have started work in 2011. And at that time, the plethora of available engines to use for any development was non-existent or Ooh, yeah. greatly diminished. And so that kind of set the stage for things, yeah, right? Yeah. Is, is I came in and it's like, okay, they're trying to figure out how to make a game all they have is some Graphics. amount of ability to render stuff to the screen. Mm -hmm. Not that they have anything to render the screen, but uh, the inside joke that became the angry <laughs> elephant. Yes. And No artists, none. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the other thing was, how are they going to make this game, right? Because when you have an engine and you don't have any way of making data for it, you have to figure out some way of generating game out of that. Something for designers or other people to work with to make something that exists. And so the idea was that they're going to use the tweak bar, uh, which is the sort of plugin that is, it's there to let you tweak values on things to kind of play with where they should be at. Uh, and they're kind of trying to strong arm it into something else. Yeah, something else is right. <laughs> we had redesigned a bit of the API to be able to save and do a couple other things with it, but it, it was a bad idea. It was a terrible idea. It was much, much better when we went around and moved on to C-sharp tools. Yeah, which... Yeah. I had been at that point trying to figure out doing tool development in C Sharp because it sounded had sounded interesting to me. And so that idea then came out and I'm like, okay, we're going to try to do this this way. Everyone was basically like, yeah, that makes, makes a lot more sense. We should probably do that. This yep. was a terrible idea. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> so I, I remember one of my first acts was to rip the tweak bar out. Yep. Yep. But yeah. So with that, we're uh, we're edging into the transition point, I would say, for the next cast, which will be about a more in-depth look at the engine development on this product, Highway to the Moon. So uh, I'd like to bring us to the sign-off for this particular part. Santier, signing off. Dusty, signing off. And this is Redcoat, signing off. Play the games you want to play, boyos. <laughs>